Hello and welcome to Fixing SaaS Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Madingor. What is the problem of SaaS Sudan? Is it that we resort to violence to solve our issues? What single action can be taken to end instability in the Republic of SaaS Sudan? We are joined by General Kualmanyang Juk, the Minister of Defense and Veteran Affairs. He believed in convening a national dialogue to shut a way forward. General Kualmanyang Juk, welcome to Fixing SaaS Sudan. Thank you. Thank How are you ready. today? I'm fine. So we are here to explore your idea for fixing South Sudan. You're calling for a national dialogue, comprehensive national dialogue to heal the nation. Can you educate us on what uh, the national dialogue is? Well, thank you, Honor uh, Medin. The <clears throat> when a person is sick and goes to consult a doctor, the doctor does not right away uh, prescribe the medicine. And for the doctor to prescribe the right medicine has to go back to the history to investigate how it started. It is the same with the problem of South Sudan. South Sudan uh, had never been a, uh, an entity of its own uh, before the British uh, colonial administration uh, uh, formulated what became known as the Closed District Ordinance in 1936. And that is what uh, separates South Sudan from the rest of the Sudan. Before that, South Sudan were tribes that had no uh, not known, they didn't know themselves. They were only independent tribes who did not even have central administration or governance. And uh, under the British administration, uh, they could not also, uh, that's where the missionaries opened schools, and through the schools where people came to know that they are one entity. But they could not uh, educate themselves, they could not uh, unite themselves because of the lack of means of transportation. Infrastructure was not there and therefore they continued to stay as, as separate tribes. And with all the suspicion and, and, and the stories that were created, this tribe are, are cannibals. So people uh, were not one. Uh, when the uh, Nyanya one uh, started in 1955. Uh, it was later on joined uh, in 1961 when the Sudan government uh, formulated the policy of, uh, of Sudanization of the church and expulsion of the missionaries. And after that, followed by the uh, closing of the abolishing Sunday as the, as the resting day, a holiday for the people of the South, and, uh, and many other policies that result to the closure of the schools, strike and closure of the schools. And uh, Anyanya was also being fought by a few but later on joined by the rest of the people because they have the common destiny, the people of South. That so, united them. Right. You are trying to take us down memory lane right. to bring us I'm to where now. South Sudan is, and you are try trying to contextualize right. uh, the, the, the problems we are facing are not right. just starting now. Right. So, uh, again, when the agreement was signed in 1972, that was at least the when South uh, started to feel to be one. Uh, they formed the government uh, under the High Executive Council. Uh, that government faced some difficulties. Uh, the parties uh, we were more or less formed on tribal lines, just like Nyanya that had different camps on tribal lines also. Uh, but it started uh, to gain the unity of the South, people started feeling to be one. But in 1983, 
again uh, 1977, the South again started to fall apart on a regional basis. And uh, the SPLA, SPLM, uh, came to, to, to being and was joined again by the people of the South who wanted a united uh, South and a united uh, Sudan on a new basis. And it was joined again, and uh, we were happy that at least South again and that the SPLM, SPLA was going to be one. And, uh, but in 1991, then Dr. Riyag Mashar and Dr. Lama Kol, the, and after the SPLM SPLA had liberated 80% of the territory of South Sudan, then they uh, rebelled, attempted to take power from Dr. John by force. And uh, when they failed, then they, they, they decided to fight. Uh, and that inflicted uh, became turned into a tribal warfare. When the uh, comprehensive peace agreement was signed uh, in Kenya in 2005, uh, the SPLM and Dr. Dr. John Garan called for a, a South South dialogue in Nairobi. And all the forces, uh, the political parties, and the Anyanya. I mean, the, the Anyanya two forces who were supporting the Sudan government were calling the militia. Uh, they, they, they were invited and we agreed to, to, to forget the past and unite ourselves, our ranks. And uh, when the government was formed, again, President uh, Salva uh, signed a <coughs> uh, Juba declaration uh, uh, with Anyanya two. Uh, Pauline Mati and the other armed groups uh, that were uh, uh, collaborating with the Sudan government. Uh, in spite of this, some South Sudanese continue to be in the, to remain in the South, fighting the government of the South, opposed to the government of the South. Uh, but uh, President Salva did his level best, uh, trying to unite the people of South Sudan. Uh, through the amnesty and integrating them into the government uh, institutions as individuals. Uh, but still, everybody wanted, uh, we're still uh, experiencing insecurity in the form of uh, a tribal warfare, in the form of uh, Cattle, rest, cattle rustling, uh, and, uh, and uh, unorganized movement. And so there has been complaint from the people of the South. Land grabbing, uh, unemployment came in because most of our people came from outside. There has been killing. People have been fighting here and there no stability. Uh, those who join the government, again, they defect. They go back to Sudan government, and they are armed. They come and fight the South Sudan. And everywhere there has been fighting and fighting. Many efforts were made uh, in the form of uh, uh, peace talks, uh, 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 old South Sudan uh, conference of chiefs and Kings of South Sudan in Bentiu, 2008, and uh, all the efforts were made. So people come and then again they fall apart. Uh, in two May I interject here mm -hmm. just to fill in our audience? Mm -hmm. So you have talked about how the present challenges are historical. Right. It did not just stand now, and you are saying that South Sudanese throughout their history have never been one. They have never, uh, for the large part, united around one thing without challenges. Right. So what are you now saying? You are saying now it's time to be one? Well, we, we have to uh, find out, we question ourselves, what else can we do? Uh, uh, 
and rebellion continue to be like uh, Riyang Mashar rebelled recently. In 2013, he rebelled. Again, peace uh, talks were made, and he came in. 2016, again, he rebelled. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and also, followed also by Dr. Lama Kol and other groups also rebelling and going to Sudan, declaring a war against the South, people of South. This insecurity has uh, caused a lot uh, uh, of harm to our people. Uh, there's no development taking place, uh, no stability. Even delivery of social services to the people is not going. Economic development is not taking place. So we thought of uh, uh, inviting the people of South Sudan uh, so that we address ourselves. What is the, what is the cause? What is the real problem that we are fighting, destroying our country? Uh, it not, doesn't become again the problem of one party, the SPLM. Doesn't become the problem of uh, uh, Salva Kiir or Kuala or anybody else. It is a problem of South Sudan. We call the people of South Sudan on uh, a national dialogue where they will come and dialogue and uh, what, is, what is the issue? What are the problems facing South Sudan? And how do we solve them? And uh, to do this so that it becomes national, uh, then we want, we in the Council of Ministers have uh, uh, resolved that uh, a national dialogue has to be called. Uh, where everybody, most of the people, you go to the county to be, to be national, and, every, and all the people involved, uh, we have to see that all the tribes are involved. All the areas are involved. So to do it national, and to, in order to involve everybody, we go down to the grassroots, uh, bringing uh, repre representative, uh, representatives of women, of chiefs, of youth, civil societies, and uh, any other group, the uh, religious uh, uh, representative from the religious uh, uh, faith, faith organizations, and uh, from every county, so that they come to Juba and they dialogue. This dialogue, we want it to be fair. We want even to invite in those who are carrying the arms, and uh, their security will be guaranteed. The dialogue, we want it to be trans transparent where everybody will come in, everybody there will wish to attend it. As an observer, the, the IGAT member states, the African Union, the UN, the Troika, to be observers in, in this. And uh, we believe this is where, uh, when they dialogue and they come out they identify what the problem is, and then they come forward with the come out with the way forward. Let, let me uh, uh, point out the fact that some people will dismiss it before it even uh, kicks off because it is an initiative of the government. How will you appeal to those people so that they don't think this is just a ploy to to uh, keep power? Well. How, if, how genuine is it? That's what they would ask. Uh, it's genuine in the sense that uh, we will bring in everybody. As I said before, uh, the, the, uh, when it is under observation by others, it will have to be genuine. Uh, the, uh, the opposition will be invited in. Everybody will come in. And if it is not, uh, if they don't accept it, then what is the alternative? They will have to come forward. 
but we think it is, uh, we mean making peace. And this is why we have to bring everybody. Everybody that is, is discontented must have to come because must, there must be a reason. And we want to find the reason because nobody is comfortable, nobody is even feel, feeling uh, peace. There's no development, movement forward. This is democracy in making. So we'll uh, listen to them, say what, what is their opinion. This is a good place to take a break. Yes. Welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Madingor. Do you have a vision for South Sudan? Do you have what it takes to build a just and cohesive South Sudanese society? What is your idea for fixing the nation? Join me for one-on-one -on -one interview. Let's debate about who we are and who we shall become. Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Madingor with us. General Kualmanyang Ju, the Minister of Defense and Veteran Affairs. He believes in a national dialogue as a way of fixing the nation, a divided nation. Welcome back to the show. Uh, thank you, Adi. So you are calling for a national dialogue. That means there is something wrong with South Sudan. What is wrong with South Sudan? Well, what is wrong with South Sudan is that there is no development, there is insecurity, and uh, you don't understand exactly what, uh, what is the cause of this. So I want to know from the people, uh, those who are carrying the arms, and uh, those, those who are talking, sitting under the trees, uh, discontented. So we want, uh, and people are moving to the countryside, to the outside of the country, you find the refugees, uh, people in Kenya, in Uganda, in Ethiopia, in Sudan, DRC. Our people are moving out from the country. Uh, so, what is the issue? It is not an... Uh, one person cannot find an answer to that. And therefore, we all to want to involve our people to ask ourselves, what is the issue? And the issue that the extremists are saying is that you, the ruling class, you are the problem of South Sudan. Yes, we... Do you we, agree? We are... Uh, well, this is what we want to come and hear. We'll accept. Uh, definitely, why we want to... These are individuals. But we want to come and hear the voice of the majority. What are they saying? If they are saying, Kuali, you are uh, not doing well, uh, you move out. And then I will move out because I respect the opinion of the people. Uh, I don't think that, uh, as I said before, it's not the, us the go in the government who are doing wrong. Uh, also, those who are not in the government are also those who are killing people for themselves. Those who have taken up the arms and are fighting, are they not doing wrong? Is it the best way of solving what is wrong in the government by taking up arms and killing people? It's not. It's better that we come and sit and listen to the people. What are they saying? So uh, it's great to say that uh, dialogue uh, must happen, but it, what is different about this? It has been tried before. Has it succeeded all the time, or do you say there's no alternative? Well, in the past, we did not uh, bring all the, uh, the cross-section of the societies, as we are now going to do, is to bring people from every, every tribe and every county, so that they come and sit together and we discuss the issues facing them from their areas. It, it, it had never been done before. What was done was uh, either at the level of the political parties, but you know the political parties are people who only st struggle for their individual uh, interest. Uh, want to go beyond that. Example, you find the politicians. They don't go to back to their, uh, to their areas. Uh, they remain in Juba, in the capital, and when they don't get uh, means for survival, now they, they gossip and they start it agitating. Uh, and even if they come to power still, they will not also uh, do, do, do well. This is why I want to bring our people, everybody, because the government belongs to everybody. Uh, 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 so I think we think, we think in the cabinet, when we met and passed this resolution, 
were convinced that this would be the best way of, uh, of uh, resolving the, the challenges facing our country. I'm trying to see what uh, event that we can compare to such a thing in history. Would you say it was a lot uh, more like the Shukudum Convention, where South Sudanese track from many places, except that the convention was for a political party? Is it something like that? Yes, it is. Uh, it is like that when uh, uh, we were defeated, almost defeated uh, in 1960, after the Riyang Mashad rebelled and joined the Sudan government and continued fighting us. Uh, there was frustration, and many people were almost giving up. Uh, so the the convention had to be called uh, uh, in Chukudum. And uh, after the convention uh, resolutions, that actually uh, uh, mobilized the people again and uh, united us. And we went back uh, fighting as one people. And therefore, again, we were able now to uh, recover the, all the areas that we had left. It's, it's almost like that. And would you say that uh, people are feeling the same now, that there is frustration. Uh, you said there is no development that has happened in South Sudan. There's been mass displacement, millions of people on the verge of hunger. There are rebellions cropping up everywhere. Would you say South Sudan is almost uh, sliding uh, off track? Uh, we can't deny that because, as I said before, a lot of people have moved out from the country, have gone as refugees. Uh, there's no development taking place uh, and uh, delivering of the social service to the people is not going. Uh, so uh, reality must have to be uh, admitted. Uh, and, uh, and we want, you know, uh, we need to call the people and ask them what is the issue and what do they suggest. Exactly. I, I, I do not have an answer myself, and I don't think anybody has an answer other than to call the people and tell them, look, this is what we have done as a government, trying to bring our people together. Uh, uh, amnesty was given, and we formed governments, uh, but still uh, nothing is moving on. There's corruption, yes, there is uh, killing, lawlessness, robbery, and idleness. These are all people are not even doing their own work, those uh, outside of the government. Everybody wants to be a member of the government. And if not uh, appointed in the government, then the government is bad. There's no government that employs everybody. Calling but, people is an expensive, sorry to cut you, is an expensive <coughs> adventure. So how do you fund this since it is going to be a gigantic conference? Well, we expect, uh, we know there are people worldwide uh, who have come to support the people of South Sudan uh, in the form of delivering of relief services in the field of capacity building of the people of South Sudan to be able to govern themselves. I think they will be happy to see this uh, process uh, taking place uh, because this is the best way. There is no other way of solving the problem. It's, uh, it's for the people to sit and dialogue and come up with a way forward. It happened in Kenya. Uh, when things were getting wrong in Kenya, uh, then they had to uh, hold a national uh, dialogue where they came up with uh, the solution to the problems that were facing Kenyans. So I think we'll get uh, friendly countries, organizations uh, that will join, will support the government of South Sudan in, uh, in the call for the national dialogue. So uh, the issue of uh, funding has not been resolved. That means there is no clear time frame for, for doing it. We are still working it out now. Uh, we want to, this to happen as quick as possible. So the, the government is uh, already uh, getting opinion from people uh, how it will be done. Uh, because again, 
this needs a contribution from uh, the people who will support this idea. So this process is going on now. Right. So uh, we are talking about fixing a nation, South Sudan, through this idea of a national dialogue. How do we do that? When all is said and done, how do we fix South Sudan using this conference? Uh, well, we are convinced there is no other way of uh, fixing South Sudan uh, than calling the people, because the best way is not it's not going to the United Nations, you go to the African Union. Our problems is us to solve them in a peaceful manner so that we put down the guns, we do not fight one another. Is uh, The best way of bringing peace is through understanding. And then people uh, identify their problems and they understand, they agree to resolving them. So there's no another way. This is the only way we think is the best way. And you know, uh, rebellions are triggered by feelings of exclusion, feelings of suspicions, and there's a feeling that uh, some elements in the society are dominating more than the others, that the national cake is not being shared equitably, and so uh, when all the resolutions are made, what about the implementation? Is this going to be a case where you have resolutions implemented? Yeah, that's, that is exactly what we want, because we want peace in our country. We want development in our country. We want our people to be happy and free. These are all the issues we expect them to come and, and uh, they come and, 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 and talk them out. Uh, uh, everybody will come and, and, uh, and and, uh, and air out uh, grievances, if there are at all grievances. And the government will, all of us will abide by what will come out. Uh, what will come out is uh, actually will be the way forward, would be the basis for the constitution itself. You are current minister of defense. You are presiding over a large army and would you say the composition of the army or the way it should be would be part of the discussion? You are saying everything will be on the agenda, nothing left on the table. Exactly. We want everything to be said, everything to be, any grievances to be mentioned, to be discussed, to be brought forward. Uh, we don't, we are not uh, convinced that through the army we can bring peace. Uh, we want peace on the table. When people talk and agree to make peace, uh, whichever way they will want it to be, I think that is what will, that will be the best way for the country. Uh, not by domination and uh, not by unnecessary uh, and other uh, hostile uh, action taken against the government, against the people. We are making a nation, and a nation can't be unless we become, uh, we have one policy to follow. And what convinces you that this idea is the right idea for the nation? What convinces me is that there's no other idea, way of bringing peace, not through uh, the use of the force, and uh, not uh, by people running away from the country and expect the, the external forces to, to bring peace to, to the country, is we ourselves to make peace uh, by ourselves. Thank you, General, for coming to the show. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Mandy.